This is the story of beautiful 32-year-old Shandon Scott, a great friend with a big heart and a mother of two children, who was loved and cared for by so many. Sadly, Shandon was in an abusive relationship with a convicted felon and known gang member, who has been in and out of jail his entire life. He would abuse her on many occasions requiring her to be hospitalized, friends and family worried for Shandon and feared the worst could happen to her. While out on parole, Shandon's boyfriend would do the unimaginable, and despite the best efforts of her close friends and family, their worst fears soon become a tragic reality. Welcome to Viral Crimes. Subscribe and hit the bell icon for more stories. This story takes us to Salt Lake City, Utah. Salt Lake City is the capital and largest city of the state of Utah in the United States. Situated in a valley surrounded by the stunning Wasatch Mountains, this city is known for its stunning natural scenery, with the Wasatch Mountains providing a breathtaking backdrop for outdoor activities like hiking, skiing, and mountain biking. In addition, Salt Lake City is a hub for technology and business. 32-year-old Shandon Nicole Scott was extremely kind and compassionate. She attended Granite High School in South Salt Lake. She was a cosmetologist. Her passion was cosmetics and hair, and she could always be found taking care of her family members' hair. Shandon loved to paint and would post some of her artwork on her social media. Anyone who met Shandon immediately saw her outgoing personality. She was a wonderful friend, sister, and mother to two children, a 15-year-old daughter and a 7-year-old son. Shandon was in a relationship with 31-year-old Terence Trent Voss, who goes by the street name T-Bone. Terence was a well-known gang member with the Black Mafia Gangster Gang. He had a long history of violent crimes which date back to 2006 when he was 16 and fired a gun from a vehicle on the highway. His criminal record includes aggravated assault on a police officer, aggravated assaults, robberies, drive-by shootings, attempted homicide, drugs, and several more crimes. He was no stranger to the law and have been in and out of jail since he was a teenager. The two was in a very abusive relationship. Friends describe Shandon as loving and loyal, but claim she stayed in a bad relationship for too long. On May 1 at about 2.45 a.m., Taryn shot Shandon in an apartment complex in Mill Creek. Her body was discovered inside a wrecked Ford Fiesta on Interstate 80 in South Salt Lake 15 minutes later. A witness who stopped to help when they saw the crashed vehicle claimed to have seen Terrence freaking out in the driver's seat. Terrence told the crash witness he and Shandon had been shot at. Terrence then exited the crash vehicle and then attempted to take the witness's vehicle. Officers were called to the scene and when they arrived, they began doing CPR on Shandon. Terrence was observed fleeing the area and throwing something over the bridge overpass. The item was later identified as a firearm. Officers pursued him and he was caught and arrested. Shandon had been shot 12 times, including in the heart and lungs, according to an autopsy. Video of police officers arresting a parole fugitive and gang member. He's suspected in the death of his girlfriend. Daniel Woodruff has been reporting on this story since last week. And Daniel, you got your hands on this video. What does it show us? Well, the witness happened to be very nearby early Saturday morning when Terrence Voss was arrested. And for 40 minutes, this witness broadcast live on Facebook that arrest, which capped off a very violent night. Oh, I got the guy right here. Sam Price came upon this scene early Saturday morning after hearing it on a scanner. He watched as officers took 31-year-old Terrence Voss into custody. Yeah, they were chasing the guy. Unified police say Voss killed his girlfriend, Shandon Scott, in Mill Creek. Then they say he crashed his car on I-80 and ran away, leaving Scott's body inside. Officers caught him here, near 2700 South, 300 East. Price's video shows medics checking Voss out. I think they're going to take him right now. Then walking him over to a curb where they waited 15 minutes before finally taking him to a squad car. Price says he saw blood on Voss's tank top and face. Voss had been in prison but was out on parole. Agents lost track of him though and he'd been a fugitive since February. Oh, they got the guy in there, all right. Price filmed until police took Voss away. He says officers handled everything professionally. All right, that's it from South Salt Lake. Terrence Voss is back in prison and prosecutors are still reviewing charges against him. The Utah parole system has come under scrutiny in the wake of Shandon's murder. More information was later revealed about the failures of the system to protect Shannon from Terrence. 
Many wanted to know why Terence, a man with a dangerous violent criminal history was out on parole in the first place. A look into a criminal's past who's now the suspect in his girlfriend's murder, the new details about his background and what led to his early release from jail. 31-year-old Terrence Voss is currently in a state prison after violating his parole. Police say while he was out on parole, he shot and killed his girlfriend, 32-year-old Shanda Nicole Scott. ABC4's Jordan Burroughs talked to police about Voss and the events leading up to Scott's death. He joins us live outside the Unified Police Department headquarters now. Jordan. Emily, please tell me that Voss was out on parole, calling him a parole fugitive. They say on Saturday morning, he shot and killed his girlfriend near Mill Creek, put her body in a car, then drove along Interstate 80 until he crashed. All of this while he was out on parole. 15 years of crime in the making. 31-year-old Terrence Voss has been committing felonies since he was a teenager. It started with firing a gun from a vehicle on a highway in 2006 to a conviction of aggravated assault by a prisoner and possession of a dangerous weapon by a restricted person. Those are both felonies that happened in 2017, now in 2021. Domestic violence is incredibly complex. Voss is the suspect in his girlfriend's death. Police say he committed the act of violence while out on parole. The Department of Corrections says, quote, Terrence Voss did receive approval from the board for an early release date from 6-16-2020 moved up about a month to 5-21-2020. At the time, he had an address approved for release and met the criteria for an early release as part of our COVID-19 response in collaboration with the board. I lost a daughter to domestic violence years ago, and uh, now that's a tough thing. No, they should, they should do their time. We spoke with a community member who chose to be anonymous. He said he doesn't understand how Voss could be on parole considering his violent past. Police say Utah Highway Patrol took him into custody Saturday, and he's now in the Utah State Prison in Draper. Sergeant Melody Cutler with Unified Police said he was a known gang member, but can't confirm if he still is. She added, now that Voss is back in prison, he should be there a long time. We're not in a big rush to file charges. Um, he's not going anywhere. So Unified Police detectives, as well as the Salt Lake District Attorney's Office, will be working on that. Voss was wanted on a board of pardons warrant violation. We don't know the specifics of what that is or why exactly he was out. We do know he was out a month earlier because of COVID protocols at the Department of Corrections. We also do know that those charges will be handed down soon. An investigation revealed that Terrence, a convicted felon and well-known gang member, is a former public enemy number one of the Salt Lake Metro gang unit. He has been arrested in the past in several shootings in Salt Lake City and was twice convicted of discharging a gun from the freeway in 2006. He was granted parole 21 days early in May 2020 at the request of the Utah Department of Corrections due to COVID-19. He was accused of assaulting Shandon twice while out on parole. In November 2020, he broke her leg, requiring her to get surgery. She posted pics and videos on her social media of her injuries and her crying. At the time, Shandon did not inform police that Terrence assaulted her because she believed Terrence would kill her if she did. He reportedly assaulted her once again in January 2021. Police were dispatched to a scene where they observed Shandon sitting in a vehicle crying and being treated by medical. She had blood all over her face and chest. Shandon's mother was there while she was being treated, and she told police that Shandon's boyfriend, Terrence Voss, beat her up and broke her leg. The officer asked whether she had reported it, she said no because she believed Terrence would kill her. Shandon was very upset and crying and told police that Terrence beat her up. She stated that they were out for some drinks with some friends, and Terrence accused her of looking at other guys and started to become agitated, so they left, and when they got to his mom's house, he was still agitated, and when she was going to leave, Terrence started hitting her several times. She told the officer that she was worried that Terrence was going to show up at her home and hurt them all, and she was then instructed to call the police if he showed up and to not let him in. Officers proceeded to try to track down Terrence. They went to his grandparents' home and other locations that he is usually at, but they were told that Terrence was not there and they haven't seen him. They contacted his parole officer and was informed that Terrence was usually at his mom's home and that he has an ankle monitor on, but that it was not working, so he could not provide a location for him. 
Officers searched all known locations for Terence but never located him. Terence's parole officer issued a warrant for his arrest after he was informed of the Salt Lake City Police case regarding his assault on Shandon. Terence wasn't located until May 1 after he killed Shandon. At that time, he was arrested and charged with murder. He is being detained at the state penitentiary in Utah. Later, witnesses reported to police that they had heard gunshots at about 2.45 a.m., along with the sounds of fighting inside Smith's apartment, including a lady crying and sounding terrified and begging someone not to hurt her. While Terence was in custody, he talked to someone about Shandon's murder on a phone call. He said, I don't know how we started fighting. I don't even know what it was over. I just shot her. Terence also admitted in the call that he had lied to police about another man shooting Shandon. The state medical examiner reported that Shandon had been shot approximately 12 times, but, because of exit re-entry patterns on her body, there were 43 bullet holes. Terence, who was out on parole at the time of the shooting, had previously been found guilty of many firearms-related offenses, as well as of assaulting another prisoner within the Utah State Prison. Friends said they told Shandon to leave Terence months before the murder. We told her to stop, and now she's not here anymore because of it, said one friend through tears. Dozens of friends and family members held a vigil for Shandon Sunday night at Fitz Park. Family and friends are remembering a woman who was shot and killed this weekend. Police say her boyfriend was the shooter. Yeah, real tragedy here today. They released more information about him and say he has a long criminal history. New specialist Tanya Dean is live in a Salt Lake City park where a vigil was held for the 32-year-old victim. Tanya? Yeah, Dan and Debbie, the victim, Shandon Scott, was a mom and leaves behind a 15-year-old daughter and 7-year-old son. Her friends say she was loyal and loving, but stayed in a bad relationship for too long. She was so loved and so cared about. Dozens of people turned up at a Salt Lake City Park tonight <laughs> to show their love for 32-year-old Shandon Scott. She was my best friend. I don't know. It's just horrible. Heather Redford said she was with Shandon the night she was murdered. I was with her two hours before it happened, and I never thought in a million years that I would get a phone call saying, Heather, what's going on? Like, what happened? What happened to Shandon? Police say early Saturday morning, Shandon was found dead inside a car that crashed on I-80. But it wasn't the accident that killed her. It was a gunshot wound. The driver had run off, but he was later caught and identified as 31-year-old Terrence Voss, Shandon's boyfriend. They did have a previous um, domestic violence history between the two, Shandon and, and Terrence. In addition, um, we do know he has a very lengthy criminal history. Um, he's been known to law enforcement really his entire life. Voss was a parole fugitive and has a history of assault and weapons charges. Friends say they told Shandon to leave him months ago. We told her to stop. And now she's not here anymore because of it. Tonight, they wrote notes to Shandon and sent them off into the sky. They hope she gets the message. I love you. I love you, Shandon, and I'm so sorry that you had to go through this. The family put out a press release following Shandon's murder. In it, they said, we ask that the public demand accountability and justice for the circumstances that caused Shandon's death. Failure to one is a failure to all. We ask for the full force of the law and justice to be used against the monster who took our loved one from us. We ask for accountability from those whose failure to act allowed him to continue to be in our community and cause great harm to us all. Shandon's family states that Shandon will be remembered as a kind and compassionate lady who loved her family, especially her children, deeply. What happened to Shandon was a tragedy. Her life was taken too soon by a violent criminal who should have been behind bars, and now her two children are left without their mother. My condolences to her friends and family. May you continue to heal and one day find peace. There are many reasons why victims choose to stay in an abusive relationship. Victims may be afraid of what will happen if they try to leave or speak out about the abuse. They may worry about their safety or the safety of their family. Victims may have strong emotional ties to their abusers, which can make it difficult to leave the relationship, even if the abuse is severe. Victims may hold out hope that their abuser will change and that the abuse will stop. If you or someone you know is in an abusive relationship, there is help available. Call the National Domestic Violence Hotline at 1-800-799-7233. Safe. 
Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.